Hi, in this video, we're going to find a power series representation for this function, and also we're going to find the radius of convergence. So when you see a problem like this, the first thing you wanna recall is that you have a familiar formula that you can use. If you have one over one minus x, this is equal to the infinite sum, as n runs from zero to infinity of x to the n, and this equation is true if the absolute value of x is less than one. This is basically just saying that um, this geometric series converges to one over one minus x whenever the absolute value of x is less than one. So if you've studied infinite geometric series, that's all this really is. r is equal to x, and you're just using the formula for infinite geometric series. It's not hard to prove at all. So here we have something that kind of looks like this, but not really. So I am noticing this two here, and it's making me think that the first derivative of this is gonna have a two on the bottom. Um, the reason is this, if you have, if you take this and you write it like this, and you differentiate, you bring the negative one in the front, you subtract one from the exponent, that's the power rule, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative one, and so you get one over, one minus x quantity squared. So you do get a two when you start taking derivatives of this. So instead of differentiating this, we need to have something with the two here. So watch this, I'm gonna start with this. Okay, I'm gonna start with this function here. And I'm gonna find the power series for this and then differentiate it. Basically, I'm gonna take this and start doing stuff to it to make it look like this and then we're done. So let's use this formula here on this function. This is our x here, right? This is one minus x. Here our x is two x. So this will be equal to the infinite sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two x to the n, right? This whole thing is our x. And this is valid if the absolute value of two x is less than one, okay? That's the same thing we did here, except here we have x, here we have two x. I'm gonna take this moment to go ahead and find the radius because it doesn't matter how many times we differentiate or integrate a power series, the radius of convergence does not change. The only thing that can possibly change is convergence at endpoints. If you differentiate, you might lose convergence at endpoints, but you'll never gain it. If you integrate, you might gain convergence at endpoints, but you'll never lose it. Lots of extra knowledge, not relevant, but I thought I would say it anyways. So here, um, let's solve this for x. We can simply do this and then divide by two. So we have the absolute value of x less than one half. And the radius is gonna be one half because this is a power series centered at zero. And if you draw a little picture, here's zero, here's one half, here's negative one half. And so r is equal to one half. Okay, so that's gonna be our radius. That part's really easy. So now we need to get this thing. That's our goal, right? We want a power series for this. So let's go ahead and differentiate this. I'm gonna write it like this, one minus two x to the negative one. And I'll go ahead and write this one again. N equals zero to infinity, two x to the n. All right, so differentiating this, both sides, differentiating this side, you bring down the negative one, one minus two x, subtract one from the exponent, so you get minus two and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? We're using the chain rule. So take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside untouched, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is gonna be negative two, because the derivative of x is one, the negative two hangs out, the derivative of one is zero. Okay, over here, when you differentiate, you have infinite sum, and equals, I'm gonna fill that in in a second, infinity, and then here, um, no, maybe I'm gonna write it like this just to make it a little bit cleaner so it's not confusing. So I, so I can avoid the chain rule. There. We can write it this way, that way I don't have to use the chain rule when I differentiate. This piece hangs out. You bring down the n. Subtract one from the exponent. And then, so what's happening here? So this is a part that people have a really hard time with. This is actually a one, okay? And the reason is this. We are differentiating, right? So if I plug in zero here, what, what, what is the zeroth term? If I plug in zero, I get two to the zero, x to the zero. I plug in one, I get some other stuff, right? But I'll get two to the one, x to the one. But two to the zero, x to the zero, well, what is this? This is one. So when you differentiate this infinite series, 
the derivative of this first term is zero. So the first, so the zeroth term, rather, which is the first term. So the zeroth term goes away, it vanishes, as they say in old math books. So now this is a one, because the zeroth term no longer exists after the differentiation process. Okay, um, so now let's clean this up. This is going to be two over one minus two x squared equal to the infinite sum as n runs from one to infinity of n times two to the n times x to the n minus one. I love these problems. And so here we have x squared over, this is what we're trying to get to. Infinite series are really cool. So we, we need to get this. We need an infinite series for this and we have this. So I guess we just need to get rid of the two, which is pretty easy. I can multiply by one half. Then I have one over one minus two x squared. This one half can be brought into the infinite sum. Let's do that because we're pros here and goes from one to infinity. And it's going to be two to the n over two and you subtract, it's n minus one, the properties of exponents. So it's times two to the n minus one x to the, oh, look how they match, isn't that cool? <laughs> uh, math can be really fun. Okay, and then we're missing an x squared, so now we'll just multiply by x squared, so I'll put one here. What a fun problem. And then I'm gonna put, uh, so I'll put one here, put one here, right? And then you distribute this through, so you get infinite sum, and runs from one to infinity, n times two to the n minus one. And then when you multiply this times this, you add the exponents, two plus n minus one. That's n plus one. So you get x to the n plus one. Boom, there it is. That's the infinite series. And again, the, um, the radius is one half. Yeah, pretty intense uh, problem. So just a quick recap, so you have some idea of how this works. So when you first see a problem like this, um, you, this is what you have, right? This is the, the one thing they're usually given in most textbooks. And most people, you know, you know this cold. It's like, yeah, you know this formula because it's a beautiful formula. So then you say, okay, how do I get the two? That's really the cumbersome part. Because the x squared, you can just multiply by x squared. But this two right here, well, that comes about from differentiating this. It's going to give you a two on the bottom. So you say, okay, let me start with this because that's what I have here and write down the infinite series using this formula, then differentiate it, that gives you the two, and then you just manipulate it, right? You just go from there, like we multiplied by x squared, we divided by two. And again here, when you differentiate, this is a really tricky point for people, people struggle with this. Um, the zeroth term goes away because it's a constant, okay? So instead of starting at zero, you start at one. So yeah, that's it. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there who is learning series. Good luck.